Adam and Eve had a son and named him Cain. In time, they had another son named Abel. Abel became a herdsman working with animals. Cain became a farmer tilling the soil. One day, when it was time to bring a sacrifice to the Lord, Cain decided to bring fruits and vegetables instead of a lamb. Abel also brought an offering, but it was the best lamb from his flock. The Lord was pleased with Abel's offering, but he wasn't happy with Cain's. Cain became angry when he saw that God didn't accept his sacrifice. He started to pout. God said, Cain, why are you angry? If you simply do what's right, you'll be accepted and happy. But if you don't, sin is waiting for you. It's crouched by your door, ready to pounce and become your master. Instead, you need to take control of it. A few days later, Cain and Abel were talking out in a field. Cain turned and attacked his brother and killed him. Later that day, God asked Cain, Where's your brother? I don't know. Am I supposed to watch over him all the time? Oh, Cain, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying to me from the soil. You've loved this ground, but from now on it's cursed because it contains your brother's blood. Oh, you'll continue to work the field, but it'll no longer respond to you and give you its best. You'll become a restless wanderer. Cain fell down and cried out, oh God, your punishment is too severe. You're taking away my land and your presence. I'll be aimless and separated from everyone else. Eventually, they'll hunt me down and kill me. So God put a mark on Cain and said, Anyone who kills Cain will suffer for it seven times over. With that, Cain went away from the presence of the Lord. After people disobeyed God and went into sin, they became extremely wicked. All of their thoughts and actions were evil. God knew he had to destroy the people he created. Yet, a man named Noah walked with God. The Lord said to him, I'm going to destroy the entire earth with a flood because the people are wicked. Therefore, I'm making an agreement with you to preserve life on the earth. Build an ark. I'll give you the exact dimensions I want you to use. After you're done, a flood will kill all the people and animals on the earth. You and your family will be saved, as well as the animals you take with you. God gave him building instructions, and Noah did exactly as God said. He and his three sons built the ark. When it was done, God said, Noah, go into the ark with your family. After seven days, water will fall upon the earth, and every person and animal will be destroyed except those in this ark. So Noah and his wife, his sons and their wives, moved into the ark. Once they were there, animals and birds started coming in pairs, male and female. There were seven pairs of clean animals, seven pairs of birds, and only one pair of all the rest. When they had every kind of animal and bird, God closed the door. On the seventh day, the waters that were above the sky started falling to the earth. At the same time, the earth erupted, sending fountains of water shooting up from beneath the ground. Waters flowed down the hills and filled the valleys. Eventually, it covered the entire earth. All the people and animals were destroyed. Those same waters lifted Noah's ark above the destruction. The people, animals and birds that were in the ark were safe while the whole earth was being destroyed. This deluge of water lasted 40 days and covered the entire world. And then it stopped. Noah's ark floated on the water for 110 days after it stopped raining. There were winds that moved across the earth to dry it off. Finally, the ark landed on a mountain called Ararat. Noah waited for another four months and then opened the window to see what was on the earth. He sent out a raven, but it never came back. Next, he sent out a dove, which flew around but couldn't find a place to nest. Soon, she returned to the ark and Noah took her in. After seven days, he sent out the dove again. She came back that night with an olive leaf in her beak. Noah then knew that plants were growing once again. He waited seven more days and sent out the dove again. This time, she didn't come back. A month later, Noah removed the hatch from the ark and saw that the earth was dry. God said, 
Your family and the animals may leave the Ark. Once they were out of the Ark, Noah built an altar so they could worship God. The Lord smelled the sacrifice and said, Never again will I destroy the earth with a flood. There will always be planting and harvest, hot and cold, summer and winter, day and night. From now on, animals will fear you, yet you are still responsible for them. You may now eat animals as well as plants, but you're not to kill people, because they are made in the image of God. You're to multiply, and once again fill the earth with people. God said to Noah and his family, Look into the clouds and see the rainbow. When I look at it, and when you look at it, we'll remember this promise. A flood will never again destroy the entire earth. This is my promise to you. After the flood, Noah planted a vineyard. In time, he drank some of the wine from his harvest and got drunk. He went to his tent and fell asleep on the floor without any clothes on. His youngest son saw his father lying there and went and told his brothers what he had seen. His brothers draped a coat between them and walked backwards into the tent, draping the coat over their father. When Noah woke up, he learned what had happened. So he put a curse on the family of his youngest son and blessed the families of the other two. All three sons had large families with many children and grandchildren. Among all these people was a man named Nimrod. He became the first dictator. He was known for his skill of hunting and his kingdom was called Babylon. The people of Babylon realized that their potential was greater if they stayed together. They felt it best not to go throughout the world like God had said. So they built a tower that went high into the sky, high enough so everyone could see it. They felt this would keep them together. God looked at the tower and said, People are disobeying my command. If they stay together, nothing will be impossible for them. Therefore, I'll have them talk different languages. Suddenly the people spoke many different languages. They were confused because they couldn't understand one another. They didn't know what was happening to them. Immediately, the work on the tower stopped. They formed groups according to their languages and moved to other parts of the world. The tower became known as the Tower of Confusion or the Tower of Babel. The oldest son of Noah was Shem. One of his descendants was a man named Peleg. His name means division because at the time of his birth, the earth divided. His great-great-great-grandson was Abraham. Terah lived in a place called Ur. He had three sons and at least one daughter. One of the sons had a child named Lot. Another son was Abram, who married his half-sister Sarai. When Lot's father died, Terah took the entire family and moved north to a place called Haran. They stayed there until Terah died. When Abram was 75 years old, the Lord said, Abram, I want you to leave your family and country and go to a place I've selected for you. I'll make you into a nation and your name will be great. I'll bless you and I'll also bless everyone else who blesses you. And I'll curse anyone who curses you. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. So Abram took his wife Sarai and Lot his nephew and left Haran. When they came to a place called Canaan, God said, I'm giving this land to you and your children. Abram believed God even though he didn't have any children. He knew God would keep his promise. So he built an altar in the new land God had given him and worshipped the Lord. Sometime later, a severe famine hit the land. So Abram took all he had and went to Egypt. He said to Sarai, The Egyptians will see you're a beautiful woman. They'll kill me in order to get you. So tell them you're my sister. He was right. The Egyptians saw that Sarai was beautiful. When Pharaoh found out that she wasn't married, he took her into his house. He treated Abram well, thinking the man was her brother. Abram became rich in Egypt. His wealth included sheep, cattle, donkeys, camels, and servants. God was angry with Pharaoh because he had Sarai in his house. Plagues hit his family, and everyone got seriously sick. Finally, Pharaoh said to Abram, Why did you do this to me? You said she was your sister. 
Now I find out she's your wife. Take her and get out of here. So Abram took his wife and Lot and went back to Canaan. They settled near a place called Bethel. There he worshipped the Lord. In the continuation of the story of Cain and Abel, Cain's jealousy and anger led him to murder his brother Abel, whose offering was favoured by God. Upon confronting Cain, God curses him and marks him for protection before he departs from the presence of the Lord. The narrative then shifts to the account of the Great Flood, where humanity's wickedness prompts God to decide to destroy all life on earth. However, God instructs Noah, a righteous man, to build an ark to save himself, his family, and a selection of animals. As the floodwaters subside, the ark comes to rest on Mount Ararat, and Noah sends out birds to determine if the land is habitable again. When the dove returns with an olive leaf, signaling new growth, Noah and his family disembark, and God makes a covenant promising never to flood the earth again. Following the flood, Noah's descendants populate the earth, but their unity and ambition to build the Tower of Babel prompt God to confuse their languages, scattering them across the world. The narrative then traces the lineage from Noah's son Shem to Abraham, who receives a divine call to leave his homeland and embark on a journey to a land promised by God. Despite facing challenges, including a famine and encounters in Egypt, Abraham displays unwavering faith and obedience to God's commands as he begins his journey toward fulfilling the covenant and becoming the father of many nations.